Hassan Basri said, من علامة, من, من علامة إعراض الله تعالى عن العبد أن يجعل شغله فيما لا يعني that one of the signs that Allah has abandoned a person is that he busies him with that which is of no benefit to him or that which is of no concern to him. So again, من علامة إعراض الله تعالى عن العبد one of the signs that Allah has turned away from a person is that that person is busy with that which is of no benefit to them. That person is busy with that which is of no concern to them. And this connects with a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني that one of the signs of a person's soundness in faith is that they abandon that which does not concern them. So part of the perfection of faith is ignoring that which doesn't concern you. So if you connect the two, you know, this... Uh, saying from Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, which can be extrapolated from the saying of the Prophet peace be upon him to the hadith yesterday, if the most beloved of people to Allah or the best of people in the sight of Allah are those that are most beneficial to the people, then those that are most abandoned by Allah are those that involve themselves in the affairs of the people in a way that's not beneficial. Okay, so there's a direct connection. The first person is someone that involves themselves with the people, not to expose them, not to humiliate them, not to waste time, but to directly benefit them, to be of aid to them. The second is someone who involves themselves in the affairs of people in a way that they're looking for uh, their flaws, they're looking for their faults, they're looking for their next gossip material, they're looking for things that don't have any benefit to them whatsoever. And so That first person that involves themselves in the affairs of the people with the intention of benefiting the people is the opposite then of a person who involves themselves with the affairs of the people in a way of humiliating them or exposing their flaws or following up. As the Prophet mentioned it, you know, constantly looking for the next gossip, constantly looking for the next, you know, juicy thing that's being spoken about. Um, involving themselves of, in things that are of no benefit. So the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the ways to make your Islam sound, to make your faith sound, is to abandon that which doesn't concern you. And this is really important right now because a lot of us have a lot more time on our hands. We're spending more time on social media. We're spending more time looking through different things. And it's very easy to get lost in following the latest news. And the latest news, not in a way that's beneficial or not in a way that informs you about the world, but in a way that gets you caught up in the next drama, right? If there was ever a time for us to put a moratorium on um, Muslim uh, Twitter drama, then it would be now, okay? If there was ever a time for us to rethink our social media usage, it would be now, right? In the midst of this pandemic, where people are worried about how they're going to bury their loved ones, where people are worried about how they're going to fulfill their obligations in a way that they've never had to think about before, This is the time for us to really rethink the way that we involve ourselves in the affairs of other people, the the things that we busy ourselves with. That first person is someone that looks to see how they can be of assistance to the people so that they could benefit themselves in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That second person is someone who looks to see how they can uh, humiliate the people or how they can get involved in the latest gossip and drama in a way that distances themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And it also is, is just so unproductive, right? And, and by the way, I do want to actually point out something here that uh, to say that something doesn't concern you is not to say that it's not important, okay? There are some things that are important that you don't need to weigh in on and you don't need to waste your time with, right? There are some things that just don't concern you. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to pay attention to. Is this of benefit to me? Do I need to be involved in this? Do I need to be following this? Is there anything that I'm going to gain out of this for my dunya or for my akhirah? And if you read all of the, the books about, you know, people that get ahead, people that are productive, they always talk about how, how you use your idle time and um, how, you, how you perfect your craft. Now, our craft as believers is trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And, you know, Luqman al-Hakim, uh, who's a great man that Allah talks about in the Quran, that some of the, a minor opinion is that he was a Nabi, a prophet, uh, but he's certainly a great figure that we that we uh, hear about in the Quran, who excelled with his character, whose advice to his son is priceless advice, timeless advice for us. Uh, he was asked, Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says, he was asked, how is it that you reached the position that you reached? How is it that you got to that place that you got? 
And he said two things. He said, بِصِدْقِ hadithi, With being truthful with my speech. وَتَرْكِي لِمَا لَا يَعْنِينِي and, to, and, and abandoning that which did not concern me. So the first thing again was I, I was truthful with my speech. I was someone that constantly spoke the truth. I made sure that I did not lie. And the second thing was I did not busy myself with that which is which was of no concern to me. And there's a connection between the two. Because if a person engages constantly, gossip and things that are of no benefit to them, they're bound to transmit a lie even if they, you know, even if they didn't intend to lie. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said that it's enough of, of, of lying, enough of a share of lying for a person. Uh, that, uh, that he passes on everything that he hears, right? That you just relay everything that you hear. And so if you're constantly engaging things that are not productive, that are not beneficial to you, you're bound to also lose your, your, your threshold of truth, your standard of speaking the truth. Uh, constantly. And so, bisidqi hadithi, the way that he got ahead was with the truthfulness of his speech, وَتَرْكِ لِمَا لَا يَعْنِينِي and to abandon that which was of no concern to me. So you need to ask yourself, how do I keep myself busy with things that are of benefit to me? Now, I should say with that, that leisure, leisure that is halal, leisure that is permissible, is not haram. Okay, it's not forbidden. In fact, it could be used to propel you towards that which is good. So taking a break, um, you know, uh, you know, engaging things that are not, uh, that, that don't involve gossip, that don't involve things that are haram, that don't involve things that are forbidden, engaging things that are not, you know, full of drama, full of fitna, just engaging things that are lighthearted, that are within the bounds of permissibility for the sake of getting better, for the sake of, of recharging, for the sake of refreshing, those things are actually positive. Okay, so it's okay to, you know, engage your share of sports, engage your share of halal comedy, uh, engage your share of whatever it may be, right? And, you know, have some fun, you know, lighthearted humor. As we talked about yesterday, sometimes that could even be an act of worship, right? But just not getting too caught up in things that are of no benefit to you to where it becomes like an occupation, uh, an addiction to where you know everything about everything that has nothing to do with you, okay? But you're just so obsessed with always following things through, getting uh, bogged down in those things, in the process, killing your time, in the process, you know, looking at things you're not supposed to be looking at, transmitting things you're not supposed to be transmitting, developing certain things about your, uh, you know, certain feelings maybe about your brothers and sisters, getting caught up in things that are of just no benefit to you whatsoever. And I want to end... Um, on that note, with uh, something just very beautiful, um, Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar Shankiti uh, mentioned, uh, you know, how the believer lives their lives or how they determine whether something is of benefit or not. Okay, so if min husni Islam al tarkuhu ma la yani that if from the goodness of a person's Islam is that they abandon that which is of no benefit to them, and that it's a sign that Allah has abandoned you or turned away from you, which is very scary because right now we're all thinking about how do we get on God's side? How do we uh, get uh, Allah on our side? How do we connect to the Creator? How do we uh, beseech Him? How do we get His aid right now in these difficult moments? So, you know, there's a direct connection then if a person is getting bogged down in things that are of no benefit. Um, so that's one side of things. And then again, engaging things or engaging the affairs of the world to see how you can be of benefit, right? Which is the complete opposite perspective, a complete shift in mindset with how you deal with it. So anyway, Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar Shankiti um, said something very beautiful. Uh, he said that the believer sees affairs, uh, beneficial affairs in one of two ways. He said, He said, either a person engages a matter related to this world that will rectify his affairs and help him prepare for the hereafter. So what's beneficial in the worldly sense is finding something that will help rectify my worldly affairs uh, within the bounds of permissibility and help me prepare for the hereafter. Uh, so, إِمَّا مُقْبِلٌ عَلَىٰ شَأْنٍ مِنْ شُؤُنِي دُنْيَا يُصْلِحُ يَسْتَعِينُ بِهِ عَلَىٰ آخِرَتِهِ وَإِمَّا مُقْبِلٌ عَلَىٰ شَأْنٍ مِنْ شُؤُنِي آخِرَتِهِ يَسْتَعِدُ بِهِ لِلِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ This is so beautiful. Uh, my translation is not going to do it justice. He said, the second thing is a matter related to the hereafter that will prepare him for his meeting with his Lord. So I'm engaging something that is worldly so that it can either rectify my world or prepare me for the hereafter, or I engage something that is hereafter oriented so that it can better prepare me for my meeting with Allah, for my meeting with 
my Creator with my Lord. So again, he said, uh, either a matter dunya, either a matter related to this world, yuslihu, yusta'inu bihi ala akhiratihi, that would rectify him, rectify his affairs, help him prepare for the hereafter. Or a matter related to the hereafter that would prepare me for my meeting with my Lord.